and welcome back to part two of the Kanbus saga. So I got a parcel from PCBWay and I'm quite happy because inside were the Kanbus PCBs to um, decode the Kanbus and turn it into some ignition and light switches and so on. If you haven't watched part one of this video, you can do so by clicking somewhere here and maybe I will link it down in the description so you can also watch it there. And I have something pre prepared, I built one up and I want to show you how the system works now and I am so far quite happy how it worked out. Here is everything I have prepared for this video. You can see an Android car radio, the CAN bus box adapter and some car emulation which is done by a simple Arduino Uno and in Canvas decoder. And the important part is the PCB. This video is again sponsored by PCBWay. I am quite happy to work with them. Their quality is quite good and the PCBs are cheap. You cannot say it different. You get 10 PCBs for $5 plus shipping. And so far I didn't have any problems with the quality and as you can see here the PCB looks very good. This is the Canbus adapter PCB I am using to emulate the Canbus decoder box and also just to learn how the CAN bus itself works and to start with it. So I have built one up. It is here. And if it would focus, yeah. You can see here the blue pill board, which is uh, running with the STM32. I removed the resistor for the power LED to save some power while the blue pill board is in standby mode. I have the MCP2515 decoder chip and the transceiver for the CAN bus. Also here is some cir circuit to drive these PNP transistors to switch three 12 volt lines on and off. These 12 volt lines are the ignition, the light and the reverse um, here, yeah. contacts. You have here the CAN bus input, the CAN high and low, and you have a 120 ohm resistor to uh, exit the CAN bus. You have to put one at the beginning and at the end of the CAN bus. Also, here you have 12 volt input. I will now first show the function of the original Canbus decoder box. It's here. To demonstrate how the Canbus decoder box worked, I have put the Android radio here, installed the standard Canbus decoder, I plugged 12 volt into it and measured the current it uh, draws. It's right now at 1 ampere, as I can see here on the power supply. And I have connected the CAN high and low to this car emulator, I would call. You have here three switches that will turn on and turn off the different functions as described in this text. For example, you have the CAN bus ID 271. This will be two bytes long, as you can see here. And if the first byte and this uh, first bit is one, then the ignition key is plugged in. If it would be low, it will send a zero there. The um, bits coming after it are for the next positions in the key switch. But these will not get used as it's uh, not so important for the radio if they are on or not. 
Then we also have the next message here, the ID 635, this is in hex. This is uh, three bytes long and the first byte, if this is um, 5C in hex, then the light is turned on. So the radio knows, okay, it needs to turn on the light. These are the first two pins I am switching and the third one is here, the um, reverse. It's the ID 351 and the first byte, if this is two, so the bit, the second bit, if this is one, so if there would be uh, zero, two, then the second bit is one. And then the reverse um, is, yeah, is in. <laughs> and this is what this yeah, demo does. It will send the messages with the yeah, correct values. Right now only the key switch is on, but um, if I would turn it off, the radio also turns off. I will start with the light. You can see the radio dims and the lights on the switch here turns on. They will change color, it's not so important, but just to see that it works. If I now turn it off again, the light will go off and the backlight dims. And the third switch, the reverse, is yeah, used to turn on the camera. There is now no camera connected, but it would show the image of the camera while you are in reverse. And this is all just done by the Canvas connection. If I now turn off the key, the radio will power off and the current draw should be very low after some seconds. It takes a while to uh, shut the system down, the amplifier and the Wi-Fi and so on. You can see now that the yeah, current draw is around 45 milliampere. This is because the Canbus decoder box is still turned on. But if I now unplug the Arduino Uno, no CAN messages will appear to the box. And after some seconds, the CAN bus decoder box itself also goes into standby mode. As you can see now, it now draws around 14 milliampere. 13 milliampere come from the radio. This is not normal. This radio is a bit older. On the new ones, this is not there. So the 0 0.9 milliampere comes now from the CAN bus decoder box and the 13 from the radio itself. I will now install the new CAN decoder PCB, I would call it, which will kind of do the same as the stock CAN bus decoder box, but we have control over it, so we can implement new stuff. For example, if we want to uh, leave the radio on until you open the door, for example. You pull the key out and the radio will still play until you open the um, driver door or the passenger door and then the radio will turn off. It's just some comfort functions we can add here. Also, we have these RX and TX pins. These can also communicate with the Android radio itself to say, for example, the current RPM of the motor, which doors are, to, are open or closed, and stuff like uh, what light is on and what not. So, or in which position is the key. So some, some things you can also add. I will now change the box to my custom one. As you can see, I now have connected the custom PCB and it is connected to the same connector as the stock CAN bus decoder goes. And I reverse engineered the pinout by looking into the diagram of the radio itself and following which pin goes to which pin on this connector. And I have now the 12 volt coming into the CAN bus 
uh, decoder, the CAN signal itself, and three wires for the reverse, the light and the ignition pin. So these are connected to the three yeah, transistors. The radio is already turned on and it draws around one ampere again. And I'm emulating it again via the Arduino Uno. This would be the same in the car. So if you connect the radio to the original car, it would react exactly the same. So if I, for example, turn the light on, it will dim the LCD and turn the button light on again. The same goes for the reverse pin. It will then yeah, turn on the reverse camera. Or also, if I turn the reverse off again, if I pull out the key, the imaginary key, for once the light here goes off, that's just to show the ignition, and the radio turns off. And after a while, we will see that the power draw gets uh, lower and lower. And it's now at 54. If I now unplug the um, Arduino Uno, this is the same as the car, because after a while there will be no CAN messages on the car anymore. And then the decoder knows when to go into standby. This was the same here, because 50 milliampere would be quite high for a car to draw all the time. So I unplug it, like the car would not send any CAN messages anymore. And then it should also go into standby mode, as you can see now. And we are again at around 15 milliampere. 13 is again from the radio. What I also want to show now is if the car turns on again or if you want to start the radio, the car will send new CAN messages at the moment someone presses on the key or opens the door like this. New CAN messages will be sent. You see that the standby mode is exited and the current draw is around 53 milliampere again. If I now put the key in the ignition, it will then start the radio again and it is up. So you can use the radio. The whole schematic and PCB works really good and I am happy with it. And so far I didn't got any botch wires. The only thing that's not working as expected is LED number three. And if we follow it to the pin out, we see that LED number three is connected to port A0. And this pin is used as a wake up pin for the deep sleep. So it gets reassigned when entering sleep mode. I am using the sleep mode here and that way the pin cannot be used at an, as an output. So this light uh, only turns on while booting and then it turns off again when I am yeah, initializing the deep sleep. It's not so bad, but it's an error. <laughs> also the PCB is quite big, so you have this whole 7 by 6 centimeters PCB and I designed a smaller one and this time with an Arduino Uno so an Atmega 328P without the module so just the bare um, Atmega to save it as much power as possible and the whole thing is way smaller and I ordered this PCB and I'm waiting for this again. I also played around with a bit more deep sleep things. I have one at Mega 328 and an LCD display or an LC display if some would say. An LDO to get 12 volt down to 5 volt. And also the CAN adapter here. It is now receiving the data which the emulator is sending out and it draws around 25 milliampere and it will just simply show the messages as they appear the ID here on the top how long the message is and how much messages have, have been received 
and when the last one was received. On top is just a milis counter. If I now um, pull out the Arduino Uno, the messages will stop. The counter will go up that no message was received. And after 10 seconds, the whole system will go into standby, which is now. It will turn off the backlight, it will turn off the LC display, and also the CAN receiver and the Atmega. I can now go into microampere and you see that it draws only around 8 microamperes of power. 5 is around for the transceiver, the CAN transceiver, and 4 microampere roundabout for the LDO. And the rest, so 0.3, is for the display and the Atmega. And I am really happy with these results. So you could have a very compact CAN receiver. You can plug into your car or anything else, anywhere else. Um, and you could also leave it there. So you don't have to pull it out or you can lock data over a long time without worrying about your car battery if you do it this way. Last time I showed you the trick with the res um, resistor onto the transceiver of the CAN bus and to switch is via the MCP2515 CAN decoder. It turned out that you don't need any resistor on this pin you just pull it high or low via the decoder and it will draw way less current than before. So it's way nicer to leave the resistor out because that way I only got to this yeah, minimal current draw. If I now plug the Arduino Uno in again, the whole system boots again and it will yeah, start to receive the data. Stay tuned for next time. If you like this content, please give a thumbs up. I will yeah, do some more stuff with CAN as I really like the systems and I am searching right now for some devices that uses CAN bus. So like the car, but I know some heating systems also use CAN and I want to look into the data just to see how the system works in behind as I'm quite interested in that. Okay, see you next time.